Hello, everybody. How you guys doing? Wow, there's a lot of people out here. How many of you guys are HP users? Wow, more than one. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. What the hell is a PC guy doing on stage at Supermeet, right? So I'm so excited to be here. We, I, I just want to tell you a little bit about us. Rock on. Oh, dude, he knows about rock on. Fantastic. All right, so I just want to tell you a little bit about who we are, why the heck media and entertainment is so important to HP and our products, and where we've been in this industry. How many of you guys know we've been in the workstation business over three decades? Three decades of this industry. It's been fantastic. It's been a fantastic ride for us and our customers. And in fact, most every, you know, everything from running shoes to race cars are being designed on our workstation products. But most importantly, in media and entertainment, we are at every major studio around the world doing 3D animation, doing live action CG work. All of these studios rely on Hewlett Packard and the reliability of our workstation products to get their jobs done. So anybody seen any DreamWorks animation movies, right? So next movie coming out, Dragons 2, right? All done on HP workstations. And these, these customers really rely on us to provide the highest end performance to get their jobs done, but credibly in a reliable solution. So we've done a lot of work um, in this industry. We've got a full-blown product line. I'm not going to bore you with a ton of slides here, but anything from our Z230 entry-level workstation starting at under $700, right? all the way up through our Z820, the fastest solution in the industry, capable of hosting a half a terabyte of internal memory, 15 terabytes of internal storage, and up to three very high-end graphics cards from NVIDIA. You think that's a hot rod? Would you guys like to have one of those? Yeah. All right, stay tuned. We actually introduced the first all-in-one workstation called the Z1. It's a gorgeous 27-inch display. It's out there at the table for you guys to take a look at, but I want to I get you inside the hood of that engine here in a minute. We also have a very fantastic line of mobile workstations, 14-inch, 15-inch, and 17-inch ZBook workstations. We have the first Ultrabook workstation in the industry with the ZBook 14 that we introduced last year. Our ZBook 15, ZBook 17 products capable of Intel quad-core i7, three internal hard drives, and up through a K5000M from NVIDIA. Are we talking hot rod here? How many of you guys have heard of dream color displays? Yeah, more of you than HP Workstation customers, right? Our ZBook 15 and ZBook 17 have a dream color display option, the most color-critical display option in the industry today, capable of color calibration. And I, I want to give you a sneak peek that we just introduced our new 27-inch dream color display here at the show this week. So this is our Z1 all-in-one workstation. For those of you who are iMac users, if you cringe, if anything goes wrong with it, you have to take it in and get it worked on. This baby opens up the hood. You can get asked in, into that chassis and change anything out. <laughs> Graphics cards, hard drives, optical drives fully self-serviceable hot rod. It's capable of 32 gigabytes of internal memory, again, Core i7 from a quad-core technology and up through a K4000M from NVIDIA. We also offer a full touchscreen on this solution running both Windows and Linux. Cool? Rock on. And here's inside our ZA20. Again, the fastest workstation in the industry. If you love your Mac Pro, you're going to love the Z820. The only tools you need to use are these two right here. There are no screws. There's no in integrated cables. Everything plugs right into the back of the chassis. So again, adding graphics cards, hard drives, uh, even the power supply. You can change out the power supply in 45 seconds flat. No cables, right? So it's a gorgeous solution. Again, all the studios around the world are using this particular product to do high-end CG work, getting their 3D animation workflows done, and we just love this product to death. And in fact, I think you guys need to get one tonight, don't you think? 
All right. So, workstation for you tonight. I'm going to raffle it off here in a little bit. You're going to get a new Z820 workstation, 64 gigabytes of internal memory, a terabyte and a half of internal storage, a high-end graphics card from NVIDIA, K6000, which they provided to us, and the new Z27X Dream Color display that we just introduced at the show this week. This is a 27-inch Dream Color display with a billion color palette, right? It's the only color critical display that can be fully calibrated with any of the standard calibration tools out in the industry today, fully programmable, and it comes all standard with Adobe RGB, Rec. 709, all the standard color palettes that you may want. It is the industry standard, or will be the industry standard, for all studio production environments around the world. That display alone lists for $14.99, okay? Very compelling price point. Configured as I've, I'm going to be giving this away, the Z820 is a $15,000 product. Are you guys ready to take that home tonight? Fantastic. You get to see that out on the table if you haven't had a chance to take a look at that one as well tonight. But what I'd really like to do is get the heck off stage and have one of our fantastic customers come in and talk to you about how HP has changed their studio environment. I'd love to introduce Jacob Rosenberg from the Bandito Brothers. Jacob. Thank you, Jeff. Copy that. How's everyone doing tonight? Just okay, tough crowd, right? Um, I always love coming to NAB. I've been coming here for almost 18 years now. Um, and when HP asked me to come speak on their behalf, I really felt obligated to do so because I came to NAB 18 years ago with the dream of being a filmmaker and really having a knack for technology and understanding how to do things and actually being really good at Premiere Pro, which was called Adobe Premiere back then. And, uh, and I, I, I feel like whenever I come back here, I'm reminded of actually that hard work pays off and that when you have a dream of doing something, you can actually achieve that dream. And you know, today I stand up here representing a company that has been in business for seven years, making motion pictures, making commercials, making documentaries, um, and I feel like I'm actually able to live my dream. Um, so as corny as that sounds, that's just real, that's me, that's the stuff that I care about and what I want to talk about. So what I'll go through today is just a little bit of how our company grew and how the happenstance came to be that we're partners with HP. So, okay, so basically Bandito Brothers is a collective of filmmakers, athletes, and technologists. My one business partner is a former stuntman, second unit director. My other business par partner was a Baja desert racer, and I grew up making skateboard videos in Southern California. We all came together in 2004, worked on a documentary called Dust to Glory. I had a forward-thinking digital intermediate workflow in my brain, and I told them we could do a full DI and print out to film using a compressed video file, and everyone who had long gray beards who was paid a lot of money said, no, you can't do that because you can't work with compressed file formats. Fast forward 10 years to today, and they were all wrong. It's just you push forward with what you believe in, you surround yourself with passionate people, and you go for it. So we started our little company. We had one HP workstation and one box system when we started the company. So from 2005 to 2008, we grew to about 16 workstations total. I'll tell you, I'm platform agnostic. What I don't like is buying new hardware when new software comes out that forces me to upgrade. So I have a little bit of a sensitivity towards some of that stuff that lived on the Mac workstation platform where you were invested in something, and the next time something new came out, you were forced to buy something. So we sort of liked to buy hardware that had a three to five year shelf life. I had a technology director named Mike McCarthy. He has a website called HD for PC, that's a really informative place to go that can help you, you know, guide decision makings. And we started looking at systems to buy. The way we grew our company was the moment we got a post-production job and we had a budget, there was just two of us in post, me and Mike, we bought new systems. We bought used systems, we bought refurbished systems, but we would always keep investing. And what we found was the expandability and the upgradability of the HP systems after their reliability and everything, sustained a longer shelf life. Now again, we had some editors that came in and needed to use Final Cut. Of course, we're gonna have a Mac workstation there. But in terms of processing data, in terms of After Effects work, color correction work, and our other editorial work, we relied on Premiere. So from 2005 to 2008, this is basically 
our growth. And by the time we get to 2008, we kind of realize, like, whoa, we're, you know, we have 13 out of our 16 systems are HP systems. And that was sort of when we began to reach out to HP and sort of tell them that we existed and wanted to sort of forge a little bit of a relationship. I saw that they didn't have much presence in this area, and I saw that the products were working for us in a really good way. So, you know I'm well. oh, on February okay, so you can, you can leave the volume low on this while it plays back. This is a trailer for the first motion picture we released as the Bandito Brothers. The movie's called Act of Valor. It came out in 2012. And this movie sort of captured our sort of rebellious uh, approach to film production and filmmaking. We worked with real U.S. Navy SEALs. We made a movie that was very unique at a time in a really unique way, but we embraced the 5D camera in a way like nobody else. For any of you who have enjoyed Shane Hurlbut's outspoken um, presentations, you can understand the passion that we were surrounding ourselves with, and we basically embraced using the 5D. And when we were using the 5D, we would take it out to set, and we had this very small monitor. We knew what the imager was capable of, but we could never really see what we were shooting. And one day, we stumbled upon, I'm sure it was our technology director, Mike McCarthy, we stumbled along an HP Dream Color monitor. And we plugged the 5D into the Dream Color monitor, we pressed the Rec. 709 setting, and immediately we saw full range color. So 0 to 255, it also supports 10-bit color, but we saw the entire color range that that imager was actually recording. And we were able to see it, and we were able to play shots back and have confidence in what we were shooting. Now at that time, this is 2009, a Rec. 709 broadcast monitor that has calibrated accurate color is probably $10,000 minimum, but the better ones are $15,000, $17,000. This was a $2,500 monitor. And what we came to learn when we reached out to HP was that the monitor was developed in collaboration with DreamWorks. And DreamWorks was saying, we want a calibrated desktop monitor so that when we're doing all of our visual effects work, we can prove that the color is accurate. Fortunately, we work in the video industry, so we have SMPTE and you know, uh, standards and formats to work within. And when you look at the array of monitors that are out there, they look great, but they are not accurate to a standard that broadcast or you want your video to basically live in. So for us, the dream color was a way of really immersing ourselves in that HP technology and feeling like, Okay, now, instead of investing in a $10,000 external HD, you know, Rec. 709 calibrated monitor, we have our $2,500 Dream Color monitor that's next to every bay. It's calibratable, I can have a custom preset on it, and I can always play video out to it and press the Rec. 709 setting and see that. So for us, that was incredibly important to our infrastructure of just being dudes who want to keep working and want to be able to have color accuracy, but being mindful of the overhead at the whole time. So at this point in time, from 2009 to 2012, Remember the last slide I had in 2008, we had 16 systems. We're up to 41 systems by the end of 2012. And I'll let you in on a little secret by the time we get to the end of the presentation, but I'll, I'll just tell you now. What we started doing was HP has this incredible refurbished portal where what they do when machines come back from warranty, they refurbish them and they put them out. Case in point, a month ago, one of the guys that works for me says there is a 3.1, you know, processor with 32 gigs of RAM, 256 C drive, one terabyte internal drive with a K6000 card, and it's $3,300. And it was like, okay, let's buy four of those because that's, you know, cheaper than the card outright. So anyway, there was a portal that allowed us to get into that market to start working with the technology. And at the end of the day, I can understand the gripes I completely sympathize with the idea of living in a world where the operating system you like feels and looks a certain way. But at the end of the day, the tool is the tool. And I think the software companies have the onus on them to make that experience be seamless whether you're on a Mac or you're on a PC. And I think when you start experiencing speeds and you start to be able to customize a system that has a pretty long shelf life, and then you can see the benefits of the fact that you have four to five internal drives, for, you know, slots for drives for PCI slots, faster access to memory, and all of those perks, I think you're seeing a solution that's actually listening to the demands of what editors are needing, what visual effects artists are needing. So we're in a position right now, we have a number of different systems at our office. We have a 2K theater, we have a 2K DI room, we're pushing 4K data through there. I am not gonna rely on that to go through anything else than a robust 
processor and workstation system that has fast drives and that has accelerated graphics cards, as many as I want. And I feel like when we're getting away, I can appreciate the idea of getting away from this notion of a box, but at the end of the day, the performance of that box is gonna be unparalleled to anything else. I also don't like the notion of all of my ports you know, not being secure and not being lockable when I'm connecting any additional peripherals to my system. So, so anyway, so that, that's sort of, you know, philosophically how we're landing and integrating with HP. We started to integrate Z1 systems, which are their all-in-one systems. Those became sort of great iMac replacement, iMac competitor type of systems. We took one out to Hawaii. When the mobile workstation started to integrate Dreamcolor technology, think about that. I go out to set, I'm doing media management, and I'm not looking at a pre-calibrated, you know, nice looking screen. I'm actually looking at a Rec. 709 calibrated dream color display that HP is standing behind. So I'm now doing media management, data loading. I have all my PCMCIA slots and all the, you know, good connections on the side of my system, but I have a calibrated color space to look at what's been shot as I'm managing all that data. So that stuff started to trickle down into our production. And for me personally, HP came and supported a couple shoots that we had for Waiting for Lightning, which was the documentary that I directed in 2012, and we took some of that technology with us. This is a little piece of content from Waiting for Lightning, just a little clip or a trailer. You have to do stuff that nobody else You can play this do. a little bit louder. This Number is a the Great Wall is insane. You are rolling down into the complete unknown. When you finally do push off, there's no going back. I don't know that a lot of people really get Danny Way. He didn't grow up the same way a lot of other people did, losing our dad, then losing our stepdad. My kids grew up never knowing what they were going to come home to. You have scars that you never can get rid of. So what do we do? We go out and find something that's dangerous. He put all his pain on the skateboarding. Skater of the year! There's a lot of guys that, that'll do whatever it takes to win. Then there's guys that do whatever it takes to progress their sport. Is he kidding? He's gonna jump out of the helicopter into the ramp. He had to create something completely new to skate. Something bigger, faster, crazier. A structure that has not been built before. It's a lifetime of effort. His fearlessness. His vertical skill set, his street knowledge. Danny's doing what he was meant to do, and you can see that. Skateboarding is just such a notch up. In a lot of ways, it gives you strength for the rest of your life. He's always going to rise up physically, mentally. Just can't break this dude. When we first got to the Great Wall, we were just like, oh my god, this guy is going to kill himself. It's the widest spot of the wall, which does the most justice for skateboarding and the possibility of breaking a world record. This is a structure one man on the planet maybe can do. If he doesn't steer his skateboard right, going off the side, he's not going to make it. It goes beyond skateboarding. This is now life and death stuntman stuff. You can die. The whole thing is shaking around. Oh my god. If you want to live a life where you're breaking ground, it's full of uncertainty, challenge, disappointment, and Danny can live in that space. Once you lose the fear of death, you really learn how to live. It makes you realize anything's possible. Anyway, that's an example. Thank you. That's an example of my voice, but that's an example of sort of, you know, finding a way to push our company forward to give myself an opportunity to, to make a film and do, you know, what I love to do. This is where we live today. We have 10 edit bays at Bandito Brothers. We have a 2K theater, 2K uh, resolve room plus support. We have about 55 when we tallied everything for this presentation. We have about 55 workstations, seven of which are Macs. I think we have a, two iMacs and the rest are uh, actual, actual boxes. We have a mix stage and sound editorial suite. They're all running HP workstations, which is a new thing with sound editors trying to adopt more and more of that technology as they see a limitation for outputs and so forth with new form factors going forward. We also have a sister company, Cantina Created, that does a ton of visual effects, Iron Man, uh, the original Avengers movie, Men in Black 3, um, and they've integrated with us in post, and they also have integrated some of that H, uh, HP technology. So for us, it's 
it, it was just, uh, you know, it was a reminder that you can get there, and there are different ways to get there. And my favorite thing about NAB is the fact that all of you are motivated to find solutions to problems, to get questions answered. And I would say, you know, the onus is on all of these hardware manufacturers and software manufacturers to tell you why their products are good. I'm definitely drinking the Kool-Aid with HP, but I can say as a company, we've been able to grow in a fiscally mindful way because of that adoption of technology. With that three to five year shelf life, systems after three years go to do different tasks and we're investing in new systems. And like I said, we just bought you know, four $3,300 incredibly fast systems with graphics cards that are smoking. Um, so we've really been able to achieve a lot and do a lot harnessing that HP technology. So if you haven't checked it out, one of you will check it out momentarily. Um, and, you'll, and you'll be stoked. Now, are you more excited now for HP technology? Um, I will show, I think maybe while we bring everyone out, I'll show you the last project that we worked on was a movie called Need for Speed. We did the majority of the editorial at Bandito Brothers. Again, all this editorial is being worked through an Avid system with a Facilis backbone. We have 10 gig ether, we have dual channel fiber, um, and we're doing big motion pictures under our roof. So I'll play a little bit of the Need for Speed trailer, um, and then probably we should just bring some people out while we do that. You think you're a better driver than me? Everyone right? knows he's a better driver. Yeah. I can feel love. And this was a, Vengeance. just to give you some details, this was a project that was shot C500, Alexa, um, uh, 1DC, uh, GoPro, you name it. Uh, this is like the Act of Valor 2.0 in terms of formats, and I'm sure at those various booths, they're talking a little bit about what they were doing with Need for Speed and how um, significant it was. But again, thank you for the opportunity to speak in front of you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course. He rocks, right? <laughs>